the shear strain is change in the angle. Okay? Strain, we use gamma for shear strain. It's a Greek letter, gamma, for determining shear strain. And that is delta x over L. The definition of the equation looks similar to the equation that we had before for normal strain. The change here is that delta x is here, is parallel to the face of the element. Okay? So that is definition of shear strain, but sometimes instead of using that equation, we directly determine how much is change in the angle. Okay? Remember that shear strain is actually this angle. How much would be shear strain for this element? That is zero, because there's not any change. How much would be shear strain for this element? For this one, this is the shear strain. So remember that the change in the angle is shear strain. Sometimes students think that the original angle is the shear strain. That's not. The change in the angle is equal to shear strain. All right? The unit that we have for shear strain is, again, unitless. It's just a number. It doesn't matter what is the if it's a US customary unit or if it's, say, um, SI unit. We use radian usually for, for showing the strain. But because strain are very small, we use micro radian here, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 6 of radian. The sign convention for shear strain is if the angle gets smaller, we call that positive. Okay? So look at this. If the original angle is 90 degree, if it's pi over 2. If it gets smaller, we call that as positive shear strain. And if, like this, the angle gets larger, larger than 90 degree, the change in the angle is called to be negative. It's just a convention. All right. Um, a thin rectangular plate is uniformly deformed, as shown here. Determine the shear strain at P. So the original element is shown in solid line. The initial length were 480 and 720 millimeter. And the deformed element is shown in dashed line. We know how much are the movements of point Q and R on the right and on the top. And we are looking for shear strain on the bottom left corner of this element. We are looking for the change in the angle. How much is the initial angle of that solid element at corner P? It's pi over 2. It's 90 degree. How can I determine the change in the angle? There are two changes at that corner. One I can call gamma 1 on the bottom, and the other one I can call gamma 2 on the top side of that. I can use trigonometric equations. Like, how much is tangent of gamma 1? Tangent of gamma 1 is 0.5 divided by 720. Remember, I'm talking about this triangle. In that triangle, 0.5 millimeter divided by 720 is tangent of gamma 1. Okay? So if I reverse that, I can determine how much is gamma 1. Can somebody do that for me? Do you have any calculator? Use the equation that we are looking for is this one. Gamma 1 is arc tangent of 0.5 divided by 720. How much do you get from your calculator? Okay, so that would be 300694. Let me use just three digits. Okay? Did you try that? Did you get the same number? All right. Now, for this case, do not use inverse tangent. Just divide 0. 0.5 by 720. What do you get? Do you get the same number? That is not accident. We always get the same number if we ignore inverse tangent. Or you can use inverse sine for that. You will get the same number. What's the reason? That's because the change in the angle is very small, and as long as the angle is very small, you can use either tangent 
or sine or simply divide that by the other one. Remember, that is valid if the change in the angle is very small. To be on the safe side, always use tangents. Okay? I, I found sometimes it's confusing for students. So always use tangent. You will get the same number. All right, so that would be gamma 1. For gamma 2, I will follow the same procedure. 0.25 divided by 480 would be triple zero five twenty one. How much is the total change in that in the angle at that point? Total change in the angle is gamma one plus gamma two. I simply added them together and convert that into micro strain. That gave me twelve fifteen micro radian. Okay. Do you want another bonus question or no? Okay, so I will ask you to solve this problem. The procedure is exactly the same. Let me explain that in detail first. Then you try to solve that before the class ends. So uh, there is one triangle. This element is subjected to a force that pushed that downward. Okay, and it moved from Q to Q prime. It moved down by 1 16th inch. We want to see how much is the shear strain at that point, point Q. How we can determine Q in this, how we can determine shear strain in this case. Let me give you a hint about that, then you try it by your own. At how much is the initial angle at point Q? It's pi over 2, it's 90 degree. Okay? Now, if I know how much is the new angle at alpha, at that point, after movement, and if I subtract pi over 2 from that alpha, what do I get? we get the change in the angle, which is the shear strain. Does that make sense? Can you determine alpha there? I believe so. You can use similar I mean, tri trigonometric equation like. I recommend you to split that triangle into two parts. 